Hi. Well, I did. I, I contacted Alan, the executive board. I asked that they uh, consider endorsement this fall uh, as I run for a third term as head of the county sheriff. And uh, you got to know coming in the door that uh, I'm very proud to serve as your sheriff. And I'm very proud of the men and women who work for you. you guys have done a phenomenal job. Uh, some of you were here when we started in uh, 07. Some have joined us along the way. A lot of people have left over the years, right? I mean, I think this year we transitioned out a good 25 to 30 plus. There are probably a few still more to go with some uh, some lateral transfers and the late retirements. And having said that, I promised you those that were here back in uh, in 06 when I came before you, and over the years as I've uh, stopped by, that we would hold your staffing level steady with sworn deputies, and we've done just that. I put together a command staff that I think is reflective of this agency. Uh, our chief deputy, of course, came from outside the agency, came with me from Minneapolis. Uh, the other folks in my command staff are deputies here at the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office and come up through the, uh, through the ranks. Now, we told you from day one, and I meet with Al and uh, the board on a regular basis, particularly Al, uh, that we would hold the staffing levels for sworn deputies firm. Your staffing levels are 340.5. That's what I'm authorized by the county board. We stay at or above those numbers at all times. Now, even this year, you see other local agencies are down 100, 150 plus, uh, or maybe just a few, depending on where they are in the county. And we haven't done that. Our numbers have held steady. Uh, it's not because we haven't taken reductions over the years. You think about when we started in 07, for those of you that were here, we got right into the I-35 bridge collapse. It was chaos for a couple months dealing with that and putting it together. We went into 08 and we dealt with the Republican National Convention. We went into 9 and 10 and part of 11 and we had a downturn in the economy and everybody felt it. This agency, the county as a whole, and others. They reduced our staffing from 817 to 745 authorized. The chief's been able to hold it at about 755 to 760. Again, we've held true to our promise that we've not deleted a single sworn deputy in the seven years that we've been here with the Sheriff's Office. And you have my commitment moving forward, we will continue to do that. The reductions in our staffing have come from detention deputy ranks and come from clerical support services. It's not an easy thing to do, right? Because I get pressure from your union. I also get pressure from the other five that we deal with on a regular basis. Uh, but our commitment is firm to the sworn deputies. The other piece is, you know, I held firm to what I told you I was going to do in 06. I told you in 06 when I came here, we we're going to lay out a strategic plan. We we're going to be very honest and forthright. We we're going to tell folks what we we're going to do. We we're going to report back, not just to the employees of this agency, the men and women who make it work, but also to the residents of the county. It's a diverse county. You got 1.2 million people. You got over 400,000 residents of this county who are non Caucasian, many of whom immigrated here from other parts of the world. It is the great melting pot of a lot of things. And so we changed the way we do business as an agency. We told you that we're going to value the sworn deputies and the work that you do as cops, first and foremost. And we've done that. We created the Criminal Intelligence Sharing and Analysis Unit. We created the Violent Offender Task Force. We have merged different parts of this agency together, some out of necessity uh, because of budget, some because it was the right thing to do at the right time, like the folks who work in our community engagement team. It's the right thing to do, serving a diverse county like we have and then serving the other agencies. There are 36 local police chiefs in this county and eight federal agencies that have jurisdiction. We have maintained steady in terms of assigning our personnel to those task forces and those partnerships whenever possible, including you know, some of the leadership schools like the FBI Academy and the Police Executive Research Forum and training above and beyond the accreditation at the crime lab, the accreditation at the jail has remained steady. Why? Because it's risk management. I don't want to read about the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office on the front page of the paper or see you on the 4, 5, 9, 10 o'clock news unless it's for the good things. And you guys have honored that. You've kept it clean. You've kept it pure. The integrity is beyond. It's the one compliment I get each and every day about the men and women who work in the Sheriff's Office is how you look, how you act, in how you conduct yourselves, whether on duty, on patrol downtown, out in the western suburbs, the crime lab, whatever your assignment may be, I hear about it. I'm your biggest cheerleader, and that's my job as the elected sheriff. The chief runs the day-to-day -day operations, and the four majors run the four bureaus. 
and the divisions that fall under them. I'm accountable for everybody that works here, including my command staff. When issues come up, I expect, as Al and the board have done, to come to me and tell me about them. Talk to me. Some I'm aware. Some, Al will tell you, I have a faintest idea or clue. Why? Because they're low-level things that didn't make their way up the chain of command, or supervisors along the way made changes. But hey, once they come to our attention, we deal with them. We deal with them straight up, and we get back to Al and the board, as you would expect uh, your leadership to, to do for you. Uh, beyond that, like I said, I'm proud to serve as your sheriff. I'm looking forward to a third term. Uh, I know my uh, the other guy is going to be here tonight, Eddie. I've known Eddie for a long time. No big, he's not here, is he? No, no. All right, now, look, you can tell Eddie I said it. I've known Eddie for a long time, 20 plus years. He's a Minneapolis cop. He's a third in command. He's a good guy as well. He's an affable, good looking guy. He's a good cop. The difference between us, though, stark contrast, is clear. I'm here, I'm doing the job. I've kept my word to you over the last eight years. You can take it to the bank. Do we do everything perfect each and every day? No, right? But there's the nature of policing. I will say, because I've heard from many of you, that the grass is not greener on the other side. I understand the pay inequities. We work with the county board. Just yesterday, we had conversations with uh, Commissioner Callison, Commissioner Higgins, Commissioner Opat, David Huff, OBF. As we submitted our 2015 budget, what that would look like for this agency moving forward. Uh, the picture is getting better. It's not getting worse. And I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job, and I appreciate the work you do every day. I'm hoping that you see clear to give me a chance to serve as your sheriff for a third term with your endorsement. I'm asking for it. Uh, I'll work hard for it. I'll work hard each and every day. And with that, I'll leave it to you and questions from your membership. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Oh, come on, they must have a question. This is like going to roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, have you had a chance to see the new schedule for polls in the town where it is? I have. So, El asked me about the, uh, the schedule proposal. We've been discussing this for some time. We asked Al and his team to go back and uh, work with our staff to put together a schedule proposal. I think Ryan, right? Ryan worked on it, brought it forward a couple weeks ago. Uh, we have it. You know, the majors, the command staff are going over it. Uh, we like what we see. There will be changes to the schedule. Uh, what they might be, I couldn't tell you today. And I couldn't tell you in good conscience what they would be today, but we heard you loud and clear. The one thing I do know for sure, though, is if we're all honest with each other, and you raise your hands about who likes eights and who likes tens and who likes twelves, I guarantee some of you will raise your hands across the room for all three of those sets. So being in my position, what would you have me do, right? We make decisions the right way on behalf of the agency as a whole. Some again are born of budget necessity, which we've done over the years. Others are the right thing to do in order to provide the core services to the residents of this county. But Al, short answer to your question, we have it. We're looking at it. There will be changes to the schedule, uh, but that's for you and I and your board to try and figure out over the coming months. Anybody have any questions? Yes, yes. John. Sheriff, yeah. everybody's been asking and wondering, you know, you do a lot of traveling to Washington and New York. We're wondering how does that benefit Hennepin County itself and the deputy and the sheriff's office? What, I mean, what are, you, what are your plans? What are you doing out there? We never hear any of the information that comes back from your meetings and stuff. So what's, what's the benefit? Sure. It's a great question, John, and I, I get this question a lot. Uh, I ask that you don't look at it as traveling, but look at it as outreach on behalf of the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. You know, I have a unique opportunity to serve on the National Sheriff's Association Executive Board. I will serve as president of that association in 2018 and 2019. In 2016, we will host the uh, 2016 National Sheriff's Association here in Minneapolis, as you did back 20 plus years ago under Sheriff Oman. That's a good thing. Uh, couple that with the major county sheriff's association because Hennepin County is about the 34th largest county out of the 75 in the country. And the 75 of us have decided to team together and advocate for public policy. So you ask how it comes back home to Hennepin County, look, they give us an opportunity on behalf of this county and this community to be able to sit down with the president and the leaders of this country to formulate public policy, national public policy, on reducing gun violence 
and we're going to take the opportunity and do that. They've done the same thing with immigration over the last several months. We're going to take the opportunity to do that. Uh, John Vogelpoor had a chance to go out a few weeks ago out to uh, Fort Worth and talk about sovereign citizens. Steve Tate was out picking up stuff about training. Uh, other folks have come with us picking up pieces about jail, court, civil, warrants, uh, a lot of different things. Uh, I think you, you know, there's no doubt that I have been engaged on a national level, but I think that's a good thing for this agency. When you travel outside of Hennepin County, and many of you do, uh, they know who Hennepin County is. They know what it is that we do and the work that we do here in the reduction of violent crime, which I said we're going to do. And you guys have not let us down. You pulled through. You've done it. You got a 36% reduction over the last uh, seven years. Uh, those are all good things, John. <clears throat> Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Yes, Bert. I've heard uh, from a pretty good source that Fears Parks is planning on getting rid of their public safety department. Is there any uh, talks about the sheriff's office taking over that responsibility? The last time we talked to them, Bernie, was about 18 months ago. I met with all of their uh, commissioners, including the former county commissioner, Penny Steele, and John Gibbs, and John Gunyu, and Jennifer Desjardins, Larry Blackstead. I met with their uh, superintendent. Uh, look, our motto is, is that local autonomy is alive and well, and if they want to continue to provide those services using, they have taxing authority in this county, so if they want to continue to have a police department, or some level of service like the other 36 of them do in this county, they're welcome to. But if they are not going to do it, then we would be happy to pick it up and provide it at a cost on a contract. Uh, I don't think it's gone anywhere over the last 12 months or so. Uh, but uh, then again, we left it up to them to come back to engage us and the county board about what that discussion would look like. But just like we do with the uh, 911 communications, we talked about this with Golden Valley for over three years before we were finally able to close the deal. And now Golden Valley will join 911 Dispatch on January 1 of 2015. But that's a three-year battle. Same thing with the 911 Communication Center being built up Plymouth. That thing started in McGowan well over 10 years ago. You know, here we are finally getting it done. They're about ready to take ownership and we'll be in here on August 1. And then we'll be up and operational uh, mid-November. The next thing on the plan will be to work on patrol, patrol headquarters. We're already doing some renovations down to the crime lab, right? And uh, we're working on the property room, some pieces with the biking stadium, a little more complicated than I'd like it to be. But there are a lot of good things happening in this agency, given where the economy was a couple years ago, given where the county board is at in terms of their makeup and their support for the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office and the men and women who work here. Sheriff, is there any concern uh, from the administration as to retention issues amongst deputies and and staffing such as that? And if so, what, what does the administration want to do or plan to do about it? Yeah, well, the retention issue is complicated as well, but it's also pretty simple, right? It comes down to money, it comes down to dollars. We knew that, just like all of you, that some of you aren't here because you're able to retire. Some of you are going to be retired before the end of the year. We knew how the pair of piece was going to affect us. We planned ahead. We hired above our authorized staffing level for sworn deputies. That's why you're not seeing us down at 315, 320, 325, but we're holding steady at about 338, 337 today. Why we just hired 10 detention deputies. We wanted to hire more, but I couldn't. If I could, we would, and we'd move some of those deputies, the sworn deputies, back out of the jail, back out into ESD or other parts of the agency. Uh, one part is about the retirement piece. We, I think we planned pretty well for that, and thanks to uh, Major Martin and the folks that work with her, we are able to keep ahead of the curve. The second part was our partnership with Hennepin Technical College. No mistake, we chose not to go back to Maple Grove when that range burned down, whoever the hell burned it down. Now, instead, we decided to go to Hennepin Tech, where we get not just a state-of-the-art facility, but we also get a chance to interact with many of the young men and women who want to get into our career field. Same token, we work hard with uh, the adjutant general from the National Guard here, General Nash in Minnesota, to recruit the soldiers coming back out of military deployment, right? Because we think they're great prospects for us to be able to work here. Many of you have military service. Some of you may have come in through that route. The other side, we also brought back what is traditionally the, uh, the cadet program uh, to be able to bring some of the more uh, diverse hiring back to the agency. That's one part of it. The second part then, 
is retention of employees, right? Daryl Logan, you here tonight? No? He's already gone, right? Yeah, yeah he's on Metro Transit. So Daryl Logan left. Daryl went to another agency. He's very candid because we have exit interviews at the people who leave us about why they're leaving, and Daryl was very clear about the monetary issue. I can't compete with that. I can't. Uh, but I don't make that decision about the money. I can talk with county administration. I can talk with Bill Peters, who you work with on a daily basis, Al. I can talk with the seven county commissioners about what it is. We have their attention. Our budget for 2015 reflects that at an 8.5% ask to the county board. It's higher than we've ever asked before, right? Usually we've been around 45 to 5%, but times call for it. You need it. We want you to get paid what you're supposed to get paid, not be on the bottom of the metro area, whether it's in sheriff's offices or local municipal police. And you've got a tough job to do. We recognize and we want to help you get there. But understand what I can do for you and what I can put into it versus what someone else has to do or put into it. This is where the union, particularly union leadership, and the sheriff can work together. We've had these conversations, right, Al? Yeah? We had, Ryan, we've had these conversations just as recent as a couple weeks ago about how to partner together, understanding we you know we're distinctly different and different goals sometimes, but partner together in order to change the dynamics of the county board so they support the men and women who work for the sheriff's office and pay you fairly the wages and the benefits that you rightfully deserve. Any other questions? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Sheriff, um, say I, I think everybody understands that the pay and monetary issues are reflective of the local economy and what's happening. <laughs> but like you just said, you you can't control that. Um, but one of the things that you are able to control is the scheduling issues. And I think a lot of people have been accepting over the years of the local economy and what, what's happened. Um, so I think uh, seeing people leave and hearing what they have to say in regards to the scheduling, not being able to get time off, wanting to be able to spend time with friends, family. Um, are those issues actually gonna be able to be addressed with what's going on within our department, with guys being able to get time off, having better schedules? I feel like, I feel like that's a constant um, issue that's always at hand. And I guess I just wanted to hear what you had to say about that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to repeat it again. But here's the bottom line answer. We met with Ryan. We have the schedule proposal, right? It came to us a couple weeks ago. We are going through it. We're looking at it. We also have to work with labor negotiations about what it would look like. I have to talk to OBF. We have to work with our finance from the sheriff's office side. Understand that a change in schedule will cost money, right? And I have a limited budget, which is why I submitted the budget I did to the county board. So I can make the changes that reflect what this agency wants to do moving forward and value the employees who work here. Pure and simple. I'd be lying to you, honestly, if I told you I could change it tomorrow and I could give you what you wanted, because I could go to all 12s, I could go to all 10s, I could go to all 8s. There isn't universal agreement in this room, is there? Candidly, is there? You guys are all quiet now. If there's not, I know there's not. Well, every division is different. But every division different is time. different, right? It right. absolutely is. It absolutely is. So just a matter of just working out between those divisions, the time that they need and what works for their schedule for accommodating whatever their services are. Yeah. I, I, I keenly get it. I'm, I'm telling you, we are, we are looking at it. We're trying to figure out what works. It's got to work all the way around, though. It's got to work for patrol. It's got to work for the crime lab. It's got to work for what happens to the guys who work in the jail. The guys who are working the jet team on the north side are working 10-hour days because that's what Minneapolis is on. Detectives are back to eight and a half. Eight. That's, that's, that's right? something, yeah, we're on eight and a half. Yep. Why can't we be on an eight like everybody else since we're all on a 28 day schedule? That's, you know, and that's, that's something yeah. that's simple. But see, the only conversation we've had thus far tonight <coughs> has been about 10 hours. You're talking about something different. And so what I'm asking is, look, we are looking at it. It is not as simple as just saying, look, we're gonna go with one. There are a number of different factors that play into it. Because he's absolutely right. You have different divisions, you have different needs, you have different work schedules. We work with different agencies. 
Uh, we are working on it. We will find some resolution to it. You have my word on that. I haven't let you down before. I won't let you down moving forward. Well, to be fair, we have talked about eight-hour days for detectives. A separate, you know, that's like Johnny said, you get separate divisions, separate needs. And so we have talked about eight hours for the detectives. Um, another concern is the staffing levels. Um, you said we're at 340.5 um, bodies, but just at ESD, we're down. Like, I don't, know, I don't know, we created that big division. It's supposed to be like 77 deputies out there, and we're down from that. Uh, courts is way down, uh, jail's down, so you're paying all this overtime. It seems like you're spending a lot of money and not catching up. I know people are leaving right now, but what's the plan going forward? Are you gonna, because we're hearing, at least I'm hearing a lot from different people in higher positions that we're not getting those bodies back. And we, you know, to function properly, we have to be at least at that 77. Because all we do right now, and I can only speak for the one division I work, but we have plenty of representatives for the other divisions. All we do is we come in, we do a couple evictions in the morning, and then we're doing civil stuff all the time. So there really isn't much going on as far as, you know, enforcement. So, our, is your plan go forward to get these bodies back and make it what we had hoped it would be? Where are you doing warrants? You're doing civil. You're doing patrol. You know, what's your goal over the next couple of years? Four it's years. a fair question. Did you hear his question? Yep. What's the plan moving forward? I told you earlier, folks. We are down 60 plus bodies as it stands today. I don't see any hope in the near future. I'm going to get those 60 bodies back. Right? Those 60 bodies did not come out of your ranks. They came out of detention deputies, and they came out of clerical staff. Doesn't mean the jail got any less busy, which means I had to move sworn deputies into the jail. We could have reduced the sworn ranks, we didn't do it. I promised you I wasn't gonna do it, I wasn't gonna break my promise to you, I have not. But what we have done is invited the union, as we've done Al, right, to work with us, to go to the county board, and either change the dynamics of the county board, right, through the election process, or help convince them why they should support the sheriff's office and our eight and a half percent budget request moving forward. It's a partnership. You're not expecting me to do this in and of myself, are you? You're not. You have an obligation in this as well, and I'm asking you partner with me and let's get it done. Let's have a unified front doing this. You've heard me speak at the budget addresses. You've seen them in shooting straight or whatever the heck that newsletter is. But we've done our part. And we'll continue to do it. It is not easy. But again, we are down 60 plus bodies as it stands today. Those 60 bodies had to come from somewhere. And I have to cover the core services of the sheriff's office. Have to cover them. Ethan, you have a question? Sort of yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Sheriff uh, Morale issue. Yep. Uh, in the past, I can please everybody. There's always someone that's going to miss a moment on something. But recently, as of the last four years for sure, it's been widespread. Uh, not only the deputies, but you're hearing it coming from supervisors and from brass, and detectives, and building staff. There's no other way to put it. Nobody's bragging about this place as it did in the past. And to put it even further, to hear what the kids at ACTC and Alexandria, they're being told not to apply here because of what's going on. Because we don't have the variety. We don't have the, the war unit, the civil unit. They hear that it's, it's a big civil unit at this time. There is no patrolling. There is no warrants. What, what's being done to address that? Especially the morale issue. You know, I don't really care so much about the kids. Spoken like a true senior deputy. <laughs> what, uh, what's, what's being done? I mean, it seems that all these people are concerned whether they're right or wrong. I can see that it's all in the dead here. And it's not, you know, people are bitching and moaning about the case. And we know that we don't control that. But it's uh, uniforms and. Uh, you told me not to talk about that. 
Yeah. Uh, Scheduling. Love you to know. give me the uh, best carrier. How many years have been nagging you? Look, you need to ask a question about morale. Morale overall, right? So look, morale is not an easy thing to tackle either, right? Everybody, you guys, there's there's a hundred of you in the room tonight. Maybe more, maybe a few less. Each and every one are independent thinkers. Everybody's got their own thing that they need or want out of their job, their career, where they're at with their life, what they want out of the sheriff's office. I get it. So do I. You know, I have good days, and I have a few bad days in between. Never a completely bad day, but usually part of bad day. Uh, this is what we say about morale. Uh, it is what you make of it. We understand. We want to work with you. There are more opportunities here, Ethan, than there were when I got here in 2007. You have more canine officers. You're out patrolling more. You've got jet teams on the north side. You've got safe zones in downtown Minneapolis. Right? Well, you know, to bring that, to, to clarify is, uh, you know, we have these canine officers uh, on these ships, the three of them are serving civil papers, where I, I pushed for, um, uh, getting the dogs used more for uh, you know, dope work, you know, conducting you know, traffic, but it, the focus is, we're so lacking on uh, bodies to serve papers that we're pulling the dogs to serve papers. And, you know, yes, that is a function of what the sheriff's office does, but to have a dog cooped up, you know, and, to have supervisors that they, they forget about the dog that you have in the back seat. And it's about the papers, about the attempts, about the, you know, what goes on. So, you know, I understand that you added all these docs. You know, what being one of the senior deputies in that, in a way, I appreciate it. I think we grew a little too fast, you know, for what we had. Um, uh, we're struggling in certain areas. And you don't have the opportunity to put that experience on the other guys because you're giving a load of papers all these addictions. I, I'm not, but it's one of our core services, right? I'm not picking it. I mean, it's, it's one of our core services, though. And I understand that. I mean, what would, what would Eddie Frizzell tell you? That we're not going to serve civil papers? We're not going to serve warrants? We're going to eliminate the canine or reduce them dramatically? I mean, what can he tell you that, that I can't tell you today? I'm not, I'm not here to yeah, upset you. You're not I'm upsetting not, me. I know, well, You're not, honestly. I know, but it's, it, it's, I'm put in a spot where I deploy the dog, and if it doesn't function to a, a standard that people expect, if it doesn't come back on a sergeant, it doesn't come back on a lieutenant or a captain, or even you, it comes back at me. And so, when we're concentrating on, you know, not having enough bodies to do the basic um, function of, you know, civil, it, it, it's kind of, you know, and I know we're going to keep going. I got a viewpoint, you got a viewpoint, we're going to keep going around and keep each other down, but it's, it's... I don't know why you look at it like that. Well, I mean, this is a this is an honest, open conversation. That's what you invited me tonight, right? Yep. You wanted to hear it, whether it was good, whether it was bad. I promised you I'd be candid, I'd be open, I'd be honest. What I'm hearing you say, though, is that maybe K-9 grew a little too fast. Maybe we shouldn't have went up to 11. We should have kept it at 8 or 7 or 6. Maybe you can take those four people and put them back out so be warrants or papers specifically. I don't know that people like that either. There's got to be a balance between the two. We're looking for ways to give the deputies here opportunities to do police work. If you don't want to do police work, let me know. We've got other places in the agency you can work not to do that. If you want to do police work, and you do, I know you do, because you're good. That's, I want to do police work. Okay. I want to go up every day and look for these motherfuckers. Good. I know, but I got to do it. Well, we have, at LDSD, we have uh, thousands of warrants yeah. sitting there. And the only time we see me at work is either before the event ends around, there's a holiday, you can't be civil, or you have a warrant suite. The warrants are such a huge part of the The guys, do you speak well, up, go to a meeting, speak up a little bit of the tenants? Very sergeant. Speak up. Hey, yeah, speak well, up. Well, the lieutenants and sergeants are saying, hey, our warrant numbers are great. Coming from the warrant unit, and you're looking at these baskets that are just overflowing. You go do a warrant. Okay, this warrant came out here in January. It's never been touched. 
It's July. And I gotta go do a warrant on July 4th and try and find this guy. And then, nah, what do I do with it? I can't find him here today, but I know I'm not gonna get to work tomorrow because there's a civil paper that also hasn't been touched in four months because we don't have enough staff out there. And then we go through these baskets, we look for all these civil papers. And the problem is, is we have so much work with civil and warrants, and the warrants are just getting pushed aside. And now that our staffing levels are down in control, the ESD, excuse me, even the civil work is starting to suffer because there's just not enough bodies out there or there are not enough people just to get it done. Again, we're 60 people short. Elle will tell you who worked warrants for a lot of years, we didn't have enough people in warrants the last couple of years either, right? Dedicated to warrants. Why? Hey, I lost 60 people. Where do you want me to get them from? I didn't lose sworn deputies, but I had to provide the work primarily in the jail because we deleted detention deputies. I can trade the two. The numbers would have been the same at the end of the day. The result of the solution to this is work with us, work with us to get the staffing back up to where it should be, which is our budget at the end of the day. Work with me about our eight and a half percent budget. Help me hire the 25 additional detention deputies we want so I can get those 25 out of the jail and back out to ESD and other parts of the agency. That's what I need from you. I'd be remiss if I didn't come here and ask for your help as well. This is your agency. You decide where it goes. You decide who's going to lead your agency as the elected sheriff and the command staff, right? Simple as that. And I appreciate what you did, Ethan. There's no, there's no hard feelings between us. I understand what you're saying, but it is a balance all the way around. <clears throat> you give me mixed messages, I get it, but I, I hear you loud and clear. I do. Look, if I did business like that, I'd have fun each and every day I came to work. I'd never have a bad day, but I don't. What else, guys? Come on. Do you have a question? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, first and foremost, I took this job not to get rich, but right. to be able to provide a, provide for my family, okay, both now and when I retire. You talk about pay equity, and you recognize that. I appreciate that. Um, but the pay equity doesn't bother, bother me as much for now as it does for the next 20 years that I'm going to work and, and, and the retirement beyond that. You said that you submitted a budget for 8.5% uh, and you have a, a relationship with the county board. Clearly you have some influence, you've got some, some political allies there. I'd be curious to hear um, what, if any, plan you've got. You mentioned working together with the association. I, I guess I'd like to hear maybe how much of that 8.5% is looked at for any type of pay increase or, or to, to balance that equity and what your, what your plan is for working with us. That's a good question. All right, it's a multifaceted question, so let me break it down. If I don't get it all, I'll come back and say, you know, you missed this part. Here's the breakdown of the budget without going into great detail. It's an eight and a half, a little over eight and a half percent 2015 budget request to the county board. Four and a half to four and three quarters percent of that budget is just to remain even from 14 to 15. That means if you don't want to lose any more personnel, any less training, any less equipment, I have to get four and a half to four and three quarters percent just to maintain even, right? It happens every year. The county board told me to submit them a two percent budget. If I was a good soldier, if I was a good elected official, worried about my election in the fall, I would have given them a 1.75 percent budget. And I would have said, hey, I can be sure for this agency whether there's 760 of you or 670 of you. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, right? It does matter, and it matters to me, and it matters to my command staff. The other 4% uh, is for one set aside to cover your, hopefully you're going to rat, well, you decide whether you're going to ratify your contract, but if you choose to do so, the county gave me 2.5% to cover your contract. Your contract as it stands that's coming before you is a little higher than that, right? Yep which means I have to cover it out of my budget. Bullshit. The county needs to cover it out of their budget. So that's one to one and a half percent of that right off the top. The other two and a half percent are for those detention deputies to hire them, put them in the jail, so I can move sworn deputies out of the jail and back out to 
enforcement services, crime lab, other parts of the agency. That's it. I mean, that's without getting into the weeds. And if you want, Al has access to the budget. We're happy to send it to him. You guys can dissect it, go through it. But I'm hoping you're going to join me in November again, Al, when we're up at the county board and we're advocating for our budget. The second part of your question, I think, was, well, maybe it was yours, but you now, how do we influence to get this done? Yeah. Come on. You got one county commissioner running for governor, whereas he has a chance or not, form an alliance, right? Those of you that support him, support him. Work hard for him. Make a deal with him. There's no big secret here. That goddamn crime lab sat for four years without moving a crime lab. 911 communications facility was needed, right? And it sat there for four years, not moving at all. It wasn't because Sheriff McGowan wasn't trying, because he didn't have the votes on the board. I saw an opportunity with Callison and Johnson coming in to form an alliance with them, to support them in order to get their votes. And you know what? They didn't let me down. The last time I looked, Callison is not a Republican. You know that I am. That's my priorities and my principles, and that's the way I do business. Maybe not how I police, but that's what I believe in, just like all of you believe in something. And Jeff Johnson, he wasn't my favorite. I would have went for my Senator Warren Limmer, who's been a friend of mine for over 30 years, who ran against Jeff Johnson, but I didn't support Warren. I supported Jeff Johnson. Why? Because Jeff told me he would support the men and women of this agency and give me his vote for a 911 communications facility when the time came. And as a conservative as he is, he wouldn't give you a dime if he had to bend over and pick it up for you. You know that's true. He gave me his vote on that. That's how we got the $34.5 million 911 communications facility through. Simple as that. That's what I'm talking about. That's politics. That's playing down and dirty with the elected officials. You had an opportunity here, and Al's not going to want to hear this, so don't get mad at me, buddy. You had an opportunity a few months ago with Marion Green coming in. You endorsed a guy who... You know, for all practical purposes, maybe before your membership, he told you what you wanted to hear, or maybe he was the only guy that came before you. Hopefully that's not the case. Either way, he didn't even make it through the primary, and now I got Marion Green. The first phone call she made was, Sheriff, how come your cops endorse my opponent? Hey, you know what? You're right. They're my cops. Yeah, but understand they have their own unit, and they do their own thing, and they got their own mind about how they go about doing it. But I got to work in that relationship. You have to work in that relationship as a whole, all of you. Whether you live in this county or you've got extended family that live in this county, or you can influence them through your votes or through your PAC or others. But that's about working together, pure and simple. And that's how you change the dynamics of that county board. There'll be others that'll be, like I said, Jeff Johnson, whether he wins or loses, most likely won't be back in two years. Maybe he'll be gone at the end of this year if he's successful running for governor. You have a chance to change the makeup of that board to support us. Ben was the only one who reached out. Who was? So, you know, ben. ben was. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, I went to two other screenings today before uh, traditional labor groups. Both of them contacted me. I didn't contact them. They contacted me. They looked at the roster. They say, look, Sheriff Stanick, Eddie Fazell running for sheriff. Uh, let's send them an invite ask if they want to come in for a screening. Jumped at the opportunity. There's two ways to do it. One is they can come and ask. And I appreciate the motivation that shows. The other way, though, is you can go out and search and be active and, and do it. There is no right or wrong answer, but there are other ways to do it. No, you just mentioned and You said hopefully that wasn't the case. That was oh, just okay. letting you understand that that was the case. Okay. So you never reached out. Well, Ben was a good guy. He just didn't have a prayer All right, what else? Come on, we're just getting started. Sheriff Bagger. Yeah, go ahead. Way back then. Keith Aaron thinks bits and pieces about us being able to work with the Metro Transit part time. Yeah. Is there any expansion that law enforcement for consideration that we'd be able to do that for other law enforcement agencies? Not you know not just Metro Transit, but just whoever's <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, uh, the answer to your question is just hold it up. It's a lot easier if you just do it. No, that takes so much effort. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he asked about Met Transit. He asked about part time employment, off duty employment. Look. We've said there are three places that are not a problem for us, right? One is the state fair police, and I think a couple of you do. Uh, the TCF Bank Stadium for the events they have there. And the third is Met Transit. Uh, did they get back to you with the final answer? 
I talked to Inspector or Major Huggett, and he said that was going to be a goal. He just needed to get some get something out to where people would like reapply or off duty employment, but that was about a month ago, so I don't know where anything How does the state law translate that number? So it's a go, is what he's trying to tell you. Our, our hang up with it is, you already know this, is that the county board would not indemnify you to work part-time or off-duty jobs. What they said is if you want to do it, they might consider it, but you have to indemnify yourselves through some type of insurance or contract. That's a labor piece, right? Not my piece. I support you doing it if you want to do it, but they've set the rule. These other three, and I think you just asked the question, the other three are all law enforcement agencies under state law. They have their own ORI numbers. And so you are holding a part-time peace officer license. You're holding a full-time peace officer license working on a part-time basis for Med Transit, State Fair, or the University of Minnesota. You understand? Yes. All right? And so what Al's asking about, Major Hugger, what he's waiting on was for legal counsel to finish up to make sure uh, that we have the proper documentation from the deputies that want to work. Essentially, you have to tell us that you've applied to the University of Minnesota for a full-time peace officer license to work on a part-time basis, and we're okay with that. Is that outside of those agencies or go to a smaller agency, a different county or something like that? that Not within Hennepin County. And that was an agreement we had with the union. If the union wants to change that agreement with the sheriff, then we should have that discussion, but probably not here with all of you. Outside of Hennepin County, I don't know, does anybody work for an agency outside of Hennepin County? Do any of you remember? No, but we probably could. We and should bring that up for discussion then. Right, right. But what we're gonna hold firm, our agreement was, we would allow TCF, we'd allow the others, but not for agencies within Hennepin County, for the, for the problems you can possibly imagine might arise, right? On outside agency, we have to go to Allen and that. Outside eight? I mean, not outside Hennepin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, does that, does that actually reflect what we talked about? Somewhat, I don't recall not being able to apply to the agencies within Hennepin County. You could apply, and then it would be up to you guys whether or not you wanted to approve it. But then it all comes down to indemnification. If uh, that other agency would indemnify you and to keep you wearing their uniform, because the county. The no, we county, were very clear, Al, that we were very clear when we allowed TCF Bank Stadium, and again, maybe we should take this one offline, that we were not going to allow you to work at Dayton or Rogers or Corcoran, or those other agencies within Hennepin County where the patrol deputies also had jurisdiction and work. There were, there were a couple that you wanted to do, and we allowed those because they had other part-time peace officer licenses or a different unit of government. Med Transit answers to the Med Transit or the Met Council. University of Minnesota is an autonomous land grant institution, right? And then what's the uh, state fair? Totally different. In fact, half of it, I don't think any of it's in our county. That's why. Ramsey. Ramsey. <clears throat> Any other questions? Or what? Uniform issues. We brought that up. We never got touched on a little bit, but like a lot of ESD people, I can't I can only speak for ESD. Yeah. They would like to switch over to outer vest carriers or cargo pants. I you got safe zone walking around with cargo pants, uh canine walking around with cargo pants. I don't see Detention deputies. Detention deputies. Crime lab. Crime lab. Crime lab. So it sounds like it's division specific, right? They're all well, unit specific. It could, it, yeah, you could leave it up to the division commanders, but you've got just a little group within ESD that's not allowed to, and that would be the patrol function for some reason. I and we're out there carrying papers all the time. We don't take this the wrong way, but those aren't decisions that are made at my level, honestly. I mean, I defer back to the captains and lieutenants. They make their business case about why they do or don't. Uh, that's why you have the disparity across the agency, so it sounds from, you know, what some do, what some don't, much like what uh, Johnny talked about. Uh, I, guess, I guess that's right, but, and I don't take this the wrong way, but you are. There's a lot of things they could do, but True. again, all right, fair enough. I hear you. You're right. Go ahead. 
Sure. Yeah, I mean, the things like you just mentioned are a lot of the little things that do affect the morale issues around the entire sheriff's department. Yeah. And it is the small things that can be fixed with the sweat of the pen, such as what you just mentioned. Um, I guess you already stated your opinion on that one, but in regards to you know anything else, maybe what's on the radar that could be changed to improve morale in the future? What would you like to see? I mean, we talked about a number of issues tonight, right? I mean, this is uh, this is what this meeting was about. Tell me what they are. I've heard from the union board about a number of them, many of which we talked about tonight. A couple maybe that you guys haven't touched on, but we heard them. What else? We'd love to see an eight-hour eight day. Uh, you. Very simple. I heard that. But and, I know, but, you know, and that, again, I'll bring it up to you. I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, but we've been uh, trying to get it done for a long time, but we're told, no, you get, you know, you're not going to happen. It's it's very simple. It, it really changed the uh, morale for us. Okay. But I feel like the morale issue, I, I feel like what's just been said is that there's things that can be changed, but it just aren't ever, they're, they're not changed for whatever reason. And one of them was just said, uniforms. But on top of that, scheduling. Like, that has, I mean, I understand that budget restraints and issues come across the board, but we're not in 2008 anymore. The Dow just hit its top mark. Like, there's money coming in. Like, it's hard to it's hard to sit here and say that, or sit here and listen to that 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 things can't be changed, and that's all we've heard for six years. You know, with all due respect, though, that isn't what I told you tonight. Not even close. That may be what you heard, but that isn't what I said. It isn't what I said on either one of those. It isn't. And I'm happy to repeat it again. I'm happy to have it offline or here in front of the group. That is not what I said, though. We have the schedule proposal. We are considering it. That's there will be changes ESD. to it as we've done in the past. What? That's only for ESD. Yeah. That has nothing to do with any of the other divisions in the sheriff's office. Your union represents the entire agency. It doesn't just re represent ESD. This is the proper place to bring it, right? I mean, you guys are fair about this. Your board is reflective of the agency. For the last three or four years, Jail has been asking for time off for for a long time, and they've they've gone on deaf ears. And now all of a sudden, ESD is important. And I don't even work there. I don't work in Jail. I don't work, and so I'm just talking for everybody. I get it. But our primary method of communication with the members, because I can't talk to you directly. You don't see an email from the sheriff to the 340 and a half. Which one of you is the half? I'm not sure. Maybe it's you. You're one and a half, Johnny. I don't know. But no, I have to one Did you get that on tape, man? Yeah. Either way. Either way. Our primary method of communication. Johnny's one and a half. One and a half. Oh, he is. He's a good guy. Our primary method of communication is through the board. And so we, want, we keep talking with the board. We keep meeting with the board. We'll continue to. They represent your interest. We have great conversations about this. You see some things result in action, maybe others not so fast or to your liking. Either way, this is what it's about. This is how we get it done. You've got collective bargaining in terms of a contract that lays out what you can and can't do. There are things that I can and can't do. There are things that are somewhere in the middle, much of what we talked about tonight, that we have to work on together. You have my commitment as your sheriff to continue to work on these. Whether it's through the end of the year and the end of my term, or into a third term through 2018. Either way, we're going to continue working on it with you. You guys decide. Look, I don't want to keep you all night, but I also don't want to cut off this nice, robust conversation. So you decide you're the boss. Yeah, we should wrap it up. Is there one last question by anybody? Can I get on a sure. thing? Uh, Hurricane Court Security. Uh, Hurricane Court Security, not loud enough. For your information, because you're not rank and file, I'm tra trying to impart some info for your knowledge so that maybe you can work on it a little bit for everybody. And I, I think you'll probably see some hits not regarding the morale issue. A lot of people feel like they're walking around with a target on their back regarding their supervisors. I'll give you two samples here that I just happen to personally know about. 
in courts were taking on a lot of overtime. We've got people coming in for four hours in the morning. We've got the overtime cap. We have sergeants that are clamoring when it's time for them to leave because the four hours is coming up and the sergeants will say, can you stick around for another hour or whatever and so on like that. I'll approve it, it's an emergency. Then those people go back to their home divisions and they're finding some supervisor that says, hey, the onus is on you to keep it under the 16 or whatever cap that they're crawling up on. And they say, well, I had some court security supervisor that, you know, and then the two of them don't get together and they kind of get left out. Now, granted, it's just a talking to. I don't know that anybody's gotten paper, but a talking to feels like a talking to, okay? My second example, I had a incident a couple weeks ago where I just had to do an arm bar on a gal. I, doing the RMS for, it's literally my first RMS report. So it's got some complications. There's a curve to get there. I end up calling Lieutenant Tate for some help on that. And instead of the assistance that I was looking for, I end up getting grilled regarding my use of force on this gal. I'm sorry, the response to resistance. That wasn't the assistance I was looking for. In 18 years of being here, sir, I've never once been called out on my use of force and tactics. I've never been told by any way, shape, or form that I'm a thumper of any kind. Me neither. But, but. <laughs> this is great. Did I tell you Johnny was my engineer? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't require a response, but in your position, I would think if I were you, I would like to know that. That people feel that way. People are kind of afraid to go up and do their job in a lot of cases yeah. because they feel like they're going to be called to the carpet. It's, it's more of a statement, really. It's fair. Okay, so I, I want to answer the question directly because honestly, I don't have knowledge about either one of those two. But I'll tell you what we have done, this administration, me as your sheriff, the folks who work for me, and all of you. We've worked hard with your deputies. Some have gotten jammed up pretty dang good. We've used that last chance agreement to your advantage, to their advantage, to keep people here, to continue them employed for their families and their pension and the health care, and to do it the right way. Have we not, Al? Yeah, definitely. I mean, some would say, gee, Sheriff, you had five of these things in the last six years. We've never had that many before. You know what? You could just simply be five short than what you have today, but we didn't do that. But look, we're all cops, too. We know what it's like. Harry, I'm not, you know, not one way or another. I'm not criticizing what you did, what you didn't do. It's the first time you brought it up to me. I'll address it tomorrow when I get back, I promise you. Right? I don't want to see it happen like that. I'm not looking for this. We're going to make a statement about kind of how people feel on a day-to-day -day basis in their job. I, I, don't, I don't need any satisfaction regarding what I just told you at all. That's not what it's about. It's just, I think people kind of agree that it, it, it kind of feels hostile a lot of times. Like, Jesus, you know, you're my supervisor, yeah, but you know, part of a supervisor's job is to boil you up, not just tear you down. And I feel like it's a little out of balance. There's a little more teardown going on sometimes. Well, look, uh, the time's running short. I got just a minute or two just to wrap it up. Here's the bottom line. I'm here tonight because I want your endorsement. I want your support as your sheriff moving forward like you gave to me uh, the last previous two times. Now, I haven't steered you wrong. I did what I said I was going to do. This agency and my command staff is reflective of the men and women who serve here and have come up through the ranks. Again, do we do it right each and every day? Not even close. Name one that does. The grass is not greener on the other side. Someone can come before you tonight and promise you all kinds of things. I didn't do that back in 2006 because I had Juan Lopez. He was easy, right? And you saw the key difference between the two. But again, when you get a chance to talk to Eddie tonight, look at the difference between the two. Look at what we've done. Look at where we're taking this agency. Look at what we can actually do for you based on our experience our influence and our passion for this job that's what i ask and i'll stand you know for questions i'll stand by the vote of this membership if that's how you choose to do so uh, either way i'm proud to serve as your sheriff and i'm proud of all of you for the work that you do day in and day out including Asia. i am all right buddy hey thanks very much okay i hope you have a great meeting enjoy l thanks for having me board thank you